Okay. I'm going to apologize to you guys for reading this. Um, I know they say that a vegan diet is supposed to enhance your memory, and I do find that to be true. But um, tonight's panelists, fortunately for us, have accomplished so many things that I, I think we can't remember them all. And for fear of leaving something out that will be worth hearing, I'm just going to keep referring to my notes. I'll beg your forgiveness for that. <laughs> Our next speaker has a degree in physics. He is the author of the acclaimed Omni Science and Human Destiny, published in 2003. In 1995, he began activism full time, using undercover operations and mass media to force a new law in Canada to ban the sale of tiger bone and bear gall bladder in all Canadian Chinatowns. He also forced U.S. authorities to enact a similar law in all American Chinatowns. In 1996, he led what the Globe and Mail described as the highest profile anti-trophy hunting campaign in Canada. This entailed him debating over 100 hunters at a time, numerous times, and involved a physical assault by a hunter, which fractured three facial bones. In 1997 to 1999, he worked in three tiger reserves in India, winning him the title Champion of the Bengal Tiger in the award-winning TV documentary series, Champions of the Wild, which aired in 20 countries in six languages. In 1999, he founded the field on planet Earth. In 2004 to 2005, he conducted two undercover operations in Japan against whaling and dolphin slaughter. Since 2003, he's completed five Compassion for Animals road expeditions, with each tour covering dozens of states over several months. And as an anti-hunting activist, he's also campaigned relentlessly against the Canadian seal massacre, native whaling, urban deer calling, and bow hunting. In 2008, he launched a three-year global emergency operation which focuses on mass extinction due to global warming, during which he will travel to 25 countries on five continents. He also published his second book, Homo Sapiens, Heal Your Earth, and there are actually a thousand free copies here at the conference for conference participants. If you haven't picked up your copy yet, please be sure to do so. And now please join me in sending a very warm welcome to our next panelist, Anthony Marr. Layer is full of fossils, and the Triassic rock 
clear what's going forward across us, and that is absolutely clear evidence that the um, extinction has happened. And also, there was a layer in between, which is very low in calcite, and very high in clay, and very high in carbon 13, which is the carbon existing in the thing. But thing to me is, without doubt, the most dangerous substance on Earth today, bar none. Even if we set off all the, all the nuclear weapons on Earth today, all the biological weapons and chemical weapons, it would not be quite as devastating as what is happening, or beginning to happen. What is beginning to happen is that given only one degree Celsius, or 1.2 or 3 degrees Fahrenheit rise in temperature up to this point, the permafrost has already begun to, to melt. The permafrost occurs in a ring around the Arctic Circle in northern Canada, Alaska, Siberia, and northern Europe. And once the permafrost begins to melt, in my humble opinion, Run away from overheating as we can. Run away from overheating means unless we do something drastic to halt it, it will spiral out of control and it will get the global temperature within the century by 16 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit and it will precipitate upon the Earth at a, and a, a comparable amount of extinction as the Triassic and, and Permian. Today we have approximately 20 million species on Earth today and if we lose 80%, that means we're losing 16 million species. And this is all because of one species. The greed of that species, short-sightedness, short uh, dishonesty, uh, corruption, all these will, unless that species changes, will cause that kind of a result. We have not yet seen the result yet because there is a time lag the amount of gas in the atmosphere emitted and the amount of temperature that would result as a result of that heating. And given that, this time lag of about 20 to 30 years gives us a sense of force and 